Ahead on early birds, fresh off win number one, a Georgia legend is waiting for the Falcons at the bend. Straight ahead, we will break down the Browns, plus go one-on-one -on -one with a rising star safety. We've also got shock in the film room and a look at what could be next for Georgia Tech football. That and more ahead on early birds. Grab a cup of your favorite Joe and let's talk Falcons football on early birds. Presented by Mercedes-Benz. Good morning and welcome into Early Birds. Falcons finally put one in the win column and we will try to match their momentum. Yes, Let's yes, get things yes. started with the opening drive shot. We got the Falcons and Browns tomorrow afternoon. This one's going to be a heavyweight fight. Atlanta right now, the number five rushing attack in the league. Last year, they were 31st out of 32 teams. So what's gotten into these guys? You know, I think it's a little bit of everything. You got Chris Lynch from who they picked up fifth year option. McGarry who they didn't. So you got a couple guys with chips on your shoulder. You add Elijah Wilkerson to this. I know he didn't play last week, but you got another guy in Gossett. We didn't call his name much, but I think this offensive line has found something. And you got some hard, tough running by CP as well. Tyler Argier is another guy who is physical in the point of attack. I think in year two under Arthur Smith, you're starting to find out what this offense can look like. And now you got a lot of weapons, especially with the quarterback running as well. Yeah, Marcus Mariota running it a little bit too. Don't forget the O-line. Jake Matthews pretty impressed so far. We got to find you know, opportunities to give him holes where he can get downfield because he's proved time and time again you know, what he's capable of. Every week we kind of make that emphasis. It, it, it's on us to help this offense you know, get going. As we continue on the opening drive, we mentioned heavyweight fight. So in the other corner, <laughs> the pride of Cedartown, University of Georgia. A whole bunch of people are going to feel real conflicted Sunday. Yeah. Shock, I don't know if you're one of them. Uh, yeah. Two words for uh, you, Nick Chubb. Yeah, he has been a beast this season, leading the league and rushing, averaging over five yards a carry. Even on that one roll game, he averaged 6.5 yards a carry. Here's another <laughs> crazy stat. He is leading the league in yards after contact. So he is a tough physical runner that definitely is going to be a challenge for the Falcons. And Nick Chubb is ready for the challenge in Atlanta, but linebacker Rashawn Evans is too. Get a chance to go home, um, see a lot of familiar faces, and I played in that stadium before, so um, I'm excited about going back. His numbers, you know, they, they show a lot on film just on the things that he does on field. You know, I've had the pleasure to be able to play him a couple times. Um, in my career and uh, you know he's, he's every bit of what they say he is. As we wrap up the opening drive last Sunday DJ it was the same old story and a very different result. Yeah. Close game right down to the final series but this time Atlanta wins it. Yeah. So did they just get a few bounces or did something shift with this team? Just I think something shift. Now usually at the end of the ball game something happens with a team you, you give it to them but you think about it we got the sack we got the holding call right. then we force them into a third long and Gino had to throw it up. We took this ball game. That's why I think it's a different style of team this time and it's a different style of way of going out to win it and the Falcons did that. They went and took the game instead of kind of giving it away. Yeah, defense shut the door. Good to see, I'm sure, for that side of the ball. Well, welcome into Early Birds alongside DJ Shockley. I'm Justin Felder. We got the Cleveland Browns coming into town at 2-1. and one. They're coming in rested as well after playing last Thursday. Is that a little factor? I mean, what's the deal with that? Last two weeks, we <laughs> have teams right. coming in being rested, but hey, we took care of Seattle. Here's another scenario. You're at home, going to have your crowd, so I'm not worried about the extra two days. The birds will be ready coming off an emotional big win. We are rested. That's what's yeah, most I'm important. All right, shock like Drew Carey says, all the little chicks with the crimson lips go film room rocks. <laughs> film room rocks. Do you watch the Drew Carey show, Cleveland I, Rocks? I am not a fan of Drew Carey. I haven't seen so, that in a long time, yeah, it's but it's the best I could do. All right, but first, <laughs> we always hear about that jump NFL players make from season one to season two. Next to the dictionary definition of that leap, you might just find a picture of safety Richie Grant. And speaking of leaps, Grant caught some serious air last week on the way to catching his first career interception, just so happened to seal the game. And after the win in Seattle, he couldn't even show me the game ball, told me it was already packed away safely in his suitcase. So this week, I followed up and asked Richie, where's that trophy ball going? Who I don't even know yet, man, to be <laughs> honest. Uh, I got to find a spot for like my memorabilia, but it's coming along though. Okay, I didn't know if it's going to a family member, if it's going in your personal collection. Staying at home with me, baby. That's mine. Honestly, man, I was more, I was more happy about the win. I ain't gonna lie to you. I was way more happy about the win, but you know that first three in the session ain't nothing better than that. You know what I mean? Let's talk about you. How do you look at your season so far? 
I think I had a great season, good start. Um, I think I'm getting better each week, as well as his defense, as well as his team. That's what we talk about, progress, not perfection. And I think we're doing a good job of that. Last year, we heard from so many fans. I would see it on social media. I put this guy in there. We want to see more of him. How did yeah. your experience last year, not playing a ton, help you grow towards this year? It was early beginning of the season. Uh, I ended up going to nickel, so I played mm -hmm. quite a few snaps. But in terms of safety, yeah, I didn't get that many snaps. But in, but like you said, man, when you're losing, everybody want to be a coach. You know what I mean? But you just got to take it in and live with it. But at the end of the day, man, I think we head in the right direction this year. You know what I mean? That's what I'm more worried about. I'm gonna ask you about your, your partner in crime at safety, Jalen. What's that that teamwork like back here, that partnership, that relationship you guys have? Yeah, it's growing every day. Um, obviously, we come from two different sides of the world, but that's the great thing about football. You get to bring everybody in together. We didn't know each other before this at all. I ain't gonna lie, me and Hawk, man, we ball players. You okay. know what I mean? We, hey, he got the last name Hawk. So he winning with the ball hawk thing, but <laughs> at the end of the day, we ball players, man. That's my brother. I love him. This Browns team, we know they, they like to run the ball. Apparently, there are only four times this year that somebody has had 100 yards after contact rushing, and Nick Chubb has two of them. I mean, what kind of challenge does he present? I mean, he just, they got two great backs over there, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? They give a steady dose of it, you know what I mean? And they can throw the ball deep if they want to. Uh, got some good guys on the outside, obviously. But it's going to be a challenge, man. We, we logging in with parent, I think we'll be good. I know, it goes back to exactly what you're saying, progress, not perfection. Mm -hmm. State of the defense right, right now, three games in. How, how do you look at things? I'm proud, dog. I'm really proud. Um, we let two slip away. Mm -hmm. um, both ways, up up one game and down one game, and it slipped away, but I'm just so proud, man. We fought, and we ended up finishing that one. That was big for it. It's time to get some game intel from Shock. You're invited into the film room, so cut the lights, and let's get started. The run game last week for the Falcons was spectacular. Rushing for over 170 yards. CP averaged over eight yards a carry. But it's because of what these guys did up front. Yes, CP has great vision, but the offensive line was tremendous. You're talking about effort. You're talking about getting after the grit. Let's talk about this particular play here. This is a 15-yard run by CP. Now, it's going to be a simple, tall sweep on the outside from, from, T, from, from CP. Ball's just going to come out here, and he's going to end up having a big play here. You're going to get some nice blocks on the edge here. You're going to get a double team here. But the guy I want you to pay attention to on the backside is Chris Lindstrom. The offensive line, even though you're on the back side of this, it's the most important part of this play, simply because he has to cut this backside guy off, because if not, this could easily just be a three, four yard play, but it ends up being a 15 yard play because of the effort by the offensive line. So watch this play get started. You're gonna have good blocking on the outside, boom. So here it is, great double team on the backside. Great double team here. You get an unbelievable job here. Look at Lindstrom, he's fighting this guy on the backside. Remember, this is the guy he has to cut off. Good job of reach blocking here. Physical at the point of attack. Fullback's gonna come up. He's gonna help here, but also here. This is the guy I want you to watch here. Watch as this play continues. He's gonna shed this block and get off and create it going off here. Boom, look at the effort, the effort. I gotta show it to you one more time. Watch him lay out. Lay out to get this guy, because if he doesn't, guess what? It's a five yard run, and it ends up being a 15 yard run because of the effort by the offensive line. This is what you need. This is what must happen up front for the offensive line. Vision, toughness, grit, this offensive line is turning heads. Thanks, Shock, and that's what the Falcons want to see more of tomorrow against the Browns. And giving the offensive line some love, always a good thing. More of them in just a moment. More college football ahead later today. A new era is coming for the Yellow Jackets with a new coach soon coming to Bobby Dodd Stadium. Michael Jenkins joins me to talk about some potential candidates. Plus, timing, leverage, and speed, man. We said there would be more O-line talk, and we're coming through on it. Caleb McGarry explores how to effectively run block next and go in deep. Hey, Falcons fans, score a touchdown with low tire prices at Mavis Tires and Brakes, the official tire retailer of the Atlanta Falcons. Visit MavisTire.com to find a store near you. Early Birds is presented by Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. And brought to you by Georgia Lottery, today could be the day. By Truist, committed to a better future. And by Home Depot, how doers get more done. Welcome back to Early Birds. It's time to switch gears and talk a little college ball. Brought to you by Truist. 
BB&T and SunTrust are now truest. Here again is Fox 5's Justin Felder. All right, welcome back into Early Birds, and we welcome in former Falcons receiver Michael Jenkins. We're here to talk college ball, but hey, still feeling pretty good. Your Falcons got on the board with a win. Very nice. Love to see that. So I hope we can keep it going this weekend. And saw some of the receivers stepping up, Drake and OZ, a couple guys. Uh, but we're here to talk college football, and the big story, at least in this state, was out of Georgia Tech, yeah. firing head coach Jeff Collins. He was 10 and, eight, and 28 in his first three-plus seasons on the flats. Michael, what went wrong? I mean, he had a tall order coming in after right. Coach Paul Johnson with that system that he ran for 11 years. Mm -hmm. And to try to follow it up and totally switch what they've been doing, the recruiting wasn't where it needed to be. Then you had guys like Gibbs transferring, going to Alabama, right. you know. So there was a lot, a lot that he had to take over with, and he just couldn't get it done. Yeah, assistant coaches as well. It, yeah. it's a, it was a turbulent time. Now it's a time of change for the time being. Brent Key taking over as interim head coach. Here's what he had to say earlier this week. We're sitting back waiting for something to happen. And you see it on the sidelines of games. And it's not just the players, it's coaches as well. People are waiting for things to happen. And they're waiting for bad things to happen. All right, waiting for good things to happen. Well, finally something good happens. We, we need to go out and make things happen. And we have to give the players, we have to empower the players during the week and during practice that you're free to go make things happen. We can't sit back and wait on things. We can't try not to lose. Yeah, Coach Key's first game will be a tough one. Jackets at Pittsburgh tonight. Tough place uh, to play in a good oh, team. Yeah. So he, here's the big question people are already asking, right? Georgia Tech is now in the market for a new coach. Yep. Who's going to be next? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to put you in charge of the search for a minute. Who are some candidates you'd be looking at? Well, obviously one name that everybody hears about is Deion Sanders. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's done a great job at Jackson State. Then you go to local guy within, you know, Coach Munkin up at UGA, yeah. OC. Um, you know, Coach Campbell or Chadwell, I'm sorry, at Coastal Carolina. Right. You know, and even maybe a guy like, you know, um, Coach Lewis from Kent State. Oh, you sure. know, you know, he did a great job against Georgia and they played some really good competition. So there's some really talented coaches out there. Even, you know, Bill O'Brien. I mean, the list can go on and on that's out there. So they've, they've got some good candidates to go after. A lot of, uh, like you said, I've heard so many people <laughs> talking about Dion. Very polarizing yeah. <laughs> idea. We'll see which way the Jackets go. Again, they got Pittsburgh tonight. All right. Well, final thing, Georgia back into SEC play at Missouri this week. Kent State kind of gave them a scare, maybe not a scare, right? But maybe uh, a little upset feeling for some dogs fans. I don't know how DJ handled it. So here's <laughs> he was the nervous. <laughs> he was so here's the question. Was it a scare or were they just a little flat? What did you see in that one and moving forward? Well, they were, I mean, it's hard to get up for Kent State sometimes. Right. The middle of the season, you just beat South Carolina SEC opponent, then you go play Kent State. But Kent State is a, a formidable opponent. I right. mean, they presented a lot of challenges. They do a lot of just different things that th you don't see on a normal Saturday. So they had Georgia on their toes. And, um, you know, give Georgia credit, obviously the better team. But they, it, those are the games you kind of need to get through to refocus and be ready for the rest of the year. Yeah, Georgia 10 and one all time against Mizzou. The Tigers nearly beat Auburn last week. Shock, we know you got to get on your way to Columbia, Missouri. How you feeling? Well, fellas, first off, I was not nervous about Kent State. and I'm not nervous about Missouri, but it'll be just fine. All right, we've been telling you all about the Falcons success in the run game. Cordell Patterson gets a lot of the credit, but even CP will tell you, don't forget about the big old line. Right tackle, Kayla McGarry is a big part of the success in the run game. He shows us the basics in this week's Going Deep. Timing, leverage, and speed, man. You got to time up the snap count. You got to have your foot in the ground faster than a defensive end gets his foot in the ground. You got to have your hands in the right place for leverage. You can't be too tall. You got to be low enough. And then you just got to you just got a motor, man. As simplified as that is, there's there's a lot that goes into, and it's really offense in general, right? Because as an offensive player, like timing is almost everything. The offensive line play, there's you know a lot of other things, but it, you know it's basis element, like really timing. So you have to have your you have to be in the right place at the right time, doing the exact right thing for anything to work. <laughs> How much of that, like the timing, is timing with the guy next to you, especially oh, in the run game? Absolutely, absolutely, especially uh, like inside zone or anything like like that. If you don't time up your uh, your steps right and stuff, and make contact at the right point in time, it gives the D lineman a chance to split the double team, or you're not there fast enough. Like there's, there's a million things that could go wrong in that like nanosecond of time. How satisfying is that when you get a good one? Very. It is incredibly satisfying. It is like one of the best things ever. The O-line in for a challenge this week against the Browns. More to come on Early Birds. A look back at Atlanta's first win of the season. They're hoping the first of many more to come. That is straight ahead. 
You're watching Early Birds, presented by Mercedes-Benz, on your official home for Falcons football, Fox 5 Atlanta. Welcome back to Early Birds. Well, it's something that can make even the biggest, toughest, meanest offensive lineman a little squeamish. Needles at the doctor's office. DJ is shaking right now just at the mention. Unfortunately, that can be the cost of doing business in the NFL, and it's all handled by the team's medical staff. Falcons Dr. Kyle Hammond takes you behind the scenes in this week's Emory Road Recovery. And so there's times that um, it's appropriate to utilize medications and or some injection uh, type treatments that we'll use either pre-game or during the game. Um, so certain injuries can be managed with um, numbing type injections or injections with medications uh, to help you know, alleviate inflammation or alleviate some source of pain that may be limiting the player from playing. And, and in those cases, then we can perform those here safely and in a private setting so that we can then help the player get back onto the field safely. We also have um, IV poles um, set up throughout this room. So there are times that we're um, using hydration techniques uh, with an IV. A lot can go on in this room. It's a pretty big room, so we're able to have a lot of athletes in here at once. In the pain management aspect of the NFL athlete is, is very serious. Um, we actually have a full-time pain management physician um, that is mandated by the league that we have on my staff. But then once we're here on game day, then we have the ability to talk about additional methods that we may use for inflammation or for um, pain or for injury management as the players are playing through certain types of injuries that are safe to play through. And some of that, again, is, is usually already handled or discussed with me in privacy with that athlete. And so we have a plan in place on how we're managing them through, you know, physical therapy treatments and, and maybe, um, you know, topical treatments. All right, thanks, Doc. After the break, we'll take a look back at the best sights and sounds from Seattle. We'll relive the Falcons win next on Early Birds. Early Birds has been presented to you by Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. Hey, Falcons fans, score a touchdown with low tire prices at Mavis Tires and Brakes, the official tire retailer of the Atlanta Falcons. Visit MavisTire.com to find a store near you. The Falcons went into one of the loudest locations in the league and left with a win. Hopefully Super Blaine and Miles Garrett wore their earplugs because they were behind the lens. Our friends at 92.9 behind the mics. Let's look back at the win against the Seahawks. <laughs> Snap to Mariota, hand to, no, Marcus will keep it around the right edge and score. First down give, Cordero Patterson, right side, 10, 5, touchdown Atlanta. Cordero Patterson races 17 yards, and with 8-12 to go first half, Atlanta's got the lead. Empty set, Mariota. How many does Seattle bring? A bunch. Quick throw. Caught London at the five. And Drake London scores the Atlanta touchdown. There's the snap. Smith looking to throw. Pressure coming. Grady Jarrett again. Here's Gino to his right. Going to throw downfield. Intercepted. Richie Grant's got this one. 15 slides down 19 yard line. Richie Grant comes up with his first career interception. We appreciate y'all. Very cool stuff. And be sure after the Falcons and the Browns tomorrow night, check out the Dirty Bird Report tomorrow evening, highlights, interviews, and so much more tomorrow night, 11 30 p.m. Make sure to tune in. Shock Falcons and Browns tomorrow. One more matchup you're going to watch. Interior of the defense. Dequan mm. Graham, Grady Jarrett, Michael Walker, Rashawn Evans. Made to stop that run game from the Browns. It's going to be tough. No arm tackles on Nick no, Chubb. Like no, you said, no. run happen. after contact is yeah. his middle name. All right. <laughs> That's all for us. Thanks for joining us here on Early Birds. For our quarterback, DJ Shockley, I'm Justin Felder. Make sure to have a good morning and a great rest of your weekend.